It's very commonly said that the root of most human unhappiness is the sense that one's life has no meaning. This is, I suppose, most frequently said in circles interested in psychotherapy because the feeling of meaninglessness is often equated with the existence of neurosis. And so many activities into which one is encouraged to enter, philosophies one is encouraged to believe and religions one is encouraged to join, are commended on, their, on the basis of the fact that they give life a meaning. I think it's very fascinating to think out what this idea itself means, or what it is intended when it's said that uh, life has to have a purpose. Well now, it's pretty obvious, I think, that when we talk about life having or not having a meaning, we're not using quite the ordinary sense of the word meaning as the attribute of a sign. We're not saying, are we, that we expect this natural universe to behave as if it were a collection of words signifying something other than themselves. It isn't a point of view which would reduce our lives and the world merely to the status of signs. All that is mortal or all that is perishable is but a symbol. And so, a symbol of what? What do we want to feel? What would satisfy us as being the th meaning behind this world? It's so often, you know, that we don't follow our ideas and our desires through. Most of the things that we want very fervently are things that we've only half glimpsed. Our ideals are very often suggestions, hints, and we don't know really exactly what we mean when we think about it. But there is this obscure sense in which we feel that life ought to have significance and be a symbol in at least that sense, if not just so uh, arid a symbol as a mere sign. Or it also may mean that life is meaningful. An individual feels that his life amounts to something when he belongs and fits in with the execution of some uh, group enterprise. He feels he belongs in a plan. And this too seems to give people a sense of great satisfaction. But we have to pursue that question further too. Why is it that a plan, why is it that a fellowship with other people gives the sense of meaning? Does it come down perhaps to another sense of meaning that life is felt to be meaningful when one is fully satisfying one's biological urges, including the sense of hunger, the sense of love, the sense of uh, self-expression in activity, and so on. But then again, we have to push that inquiry further. What do our biological urges really point towards? Are they just, however, things always projected towards a future? Is biology and its uh, processes nothing but going on towards going on towards going on? Or there's a fourth and more theological sense of the meaning of life. In all theistic religions, at any rate, the meaning of life is God himself. In other words, all this world means a person. It means a heart. It means an intelligence. And the relationship of love between God and man is the meaning of the world. The sight of God is the glory of God, and so on. But again here, there's something to be further pursued. What is it that we want in love with a person, and even a person in the sense 
of the Lord God. What is the content of it? What is it that we are really yearning after? Well now, if we go back to the first point, taking Goethe's words that all that is transitory is but a symbol, and that we want to feel that all things have significance, it does seem to me that there's a sense in which we often use the word significance, where the word seems to be chosen quite uh, naturally, and yet at the same time it's not quite the right word. We say, for example, often of music, that we feel it to be significant, when just at the same time we don't mean that it expresses some particular kind of concretely realizable emotion, and certainly it's not imitating the noises of nature. The program music, you know, would simply uh, imitate something else and it deliberately sets out to express sadness or joy or whatever uh, is not the kind of thing I mean. So often when one listens to the beautiful arabesque character of uh, the Baroque composers, Bach or Vivaldi, it is felt to be significant not because it means something other than itself, but because it is so satisfying as it is. And we use then this word significance. So often, in those moments when uh, our impetuous seeking for fulfillment cools down, and we give ourselves a little space to watch things, as if they were worth watching, ordinary things. And in those moments when our inner turmoil has really quietened, we find significance in things that we wouldn't expect to find significant at all. I mean, this is after all the art of those photographers who have such genius in turning the camera towards such things as peeling paint on an old door or mud and sand and stones on a dirt road and showing us there that if we look at it in a certain way those things are significant but we can't say significant of what so much as significant of themselves or perhaps significance then is the quality of a state of mind in which we notice that we're overlooking the significance of the world by our constant quest for it later all this language is, of course, quite naturally vague and imprecise because I think the wrong word is used. And yet not entirely the wrong word because, as I said, it comes so naturally to us that in those moments the significance of the world seems to be the world, seems to be what is going on now. And we don't look any further. The scheme of things seems to justify itself at every moment of its unfoldment. <laughs>